you've hot melt waxed your chain and it's great. <laughs> But now you've got your bike dirty and you've ridden it and you want to know how to maintain it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the quickest and easiest way to do that, which gives you the best bang for your buck in terms of helping your components last as long as possible, saving you money, but also giving you the maximum drivetrain efficiency. This is a topic that we get asked questions about all the time here on GCN. And the first thing people wonder is, how do you know when your chain actually needs some maintenance? Well, this will vary depending on the type of riding you do and the conditions you ride in. But the easiest way is to just listen to it. If it was quiet and it's now louder as you're riding along, or it's just louder uh, than it was before, that's a really good indication that it requires some additional lubrication. Now, if your chain is noisier and it wants some lubrication applying to it, at this point you have two options with a waxed chain. You can take your chain off, clean it, and then do a full-on immersive hot melt wax for a second time, and, and that'll be great. But this does take around 15 or 20 minutes to do, depending on your, your setup, and not everyone has that time. So something that's much quicker and gets you pretty much there with all the performance and is much easier to do is to just simply apply some drip-on wax. Now, at this point, we've split the video into sections. It's timestamped below. If you're in a hurry and you simply want to know the best practice and the best methods so that you get the best performance out of applying a drip-on wax, because this is the quickest way to maintain a, a wax chain, then simply skip below. If you'd like a bit more information and a bit more understanding as to the different methods and when you might want to use them and you know, how it all works, then keep watching. Now with this wax chain, if you look at a close-up of it here, it looks like it's dirty, it's not. That's, that's the wax, it is black, and you can see it on the outside links of the chain. However, it has become a little bit noisy, and that's because the, the crucial area where you want the wax is inside the links and rollers. Now, the difference between doing a hot melt wax and a drip-on wax is you get greater permeation. Um, the, the, when you do the hot melt treatment, the wax is permeating inside the links and rollers that little bit more, and so it's a little bit more efficient. Not much, according to Silke, you're looking at the difference between this and this being around 0.3 to 0.4 of a watt. So for kind of best day performances or some event that you've been you know, training a long time and building up for, yeah, I personally will go for a fresh hot melt wax chain. But for every other sort of day, and you know, if you're just wanting the benefits of waxing and the longevity and extra chain life out of it, then some, applying some, some drip on is much more convenient. The other thing to consider with waxed chains is that the waxes are often water soluble. That means that they'll dissolve in water. Water will wash them off. So if you're riding in the rain a lot, you're probably gonna have to do this more. And if you're cleaning your bike, you're probably gonna take some of that wax off more if you really concentrate on, on the chain. Now, my bike is in need of a clean here. If I was gonna do a deep clean of my bike, I might take the chain off um, just so that I'm not totally washing wax out of it and then put it back on after I've cleaned my bike. Or you can just be a bit mindful when you clean your bike that you're not spraying water directly onto the chain because we're gonna clean it in a different way. The nice thing about this is it means you don't need to use harsh solvents or degreasers to clean your chain because the wax is water soluble. It doesn't attract anywhere near as much dirt as a sticky oil-based wet lube um, and well, the other thing is that if you've got a, pre a chain that was previously hot melt immersive wax, topping it up with a drip on wax is a really effective solution. So how to maintain your wax chain? The first thing you should do is ideally do this the night before or the day before you ride. This is because drip on waxes typically are water based, this one is, and that water carrier needs to evaporate so that it's not you know, sort of self-cleaning the chain and taking the wax out of the links. So you want to apply it the night before, give it plenty of time for that water to evaporate. Next thing you should always do with whatever lube you're using, give it a good shake. The next step is to take a microfiber cloth and we're going to run the chain 
through the microfiber cloth. Do not use paper towels because they leave behind residue and like a, like a lint, uh, which is gonna contaminate the chain further. The reason why we're doing this is the microfiber is excellent at removing any dust or dirt or contamination that's just on the surface of the chain. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because if you don't do this step and you simply apply your drip on lube onto the top of that dirty surface of the chain, it can drag that dirt inside the links and rollers of the chain and accelerate wear and make your chain less efficient. To do this, I'd recommend putting the bike in a stand and then simply back pedaling the chain over the microfiber like so. And you can do it for both the bottom of the chain, as I'm doing here, and then also the top of the chain. And you'll see the microfiber is good with its little sort of microfiber hooks at pulling that dirt and dust off the surface of the chain. It's worth investing in some good microfibers. I buy them in bulk off Amazon, which saves money and they're not too expensive, and you can reuse them and wash them too. With the chain surface decontaminated, we can then apply some wax treatment to it. To do this, first put the chain in big, big, so you're cross-chaining. This is the only time that this is really acceptable. But in doing so, it's a good trick, you actually open the chain up slightly, so it allows the lube to better permeate in between the links and rollers, which is what you want. We're then going to give it another shake so that it's all mixed in. And then we're going to simply, while backpedaling, apply one or two drops of the lube to each link. Now you don't want to apply any more than this because over lubing your chain will reduce performance as well as um, under lubing it. So yeah, no more than that. With the drip on wax applied, you then simply back pedal the chain five complete revolutions just to help it all get sort of dissipated around all the links and rollers. And then when you've done five complete revolutions, I'm not actually counting. That'll do. Then we'll just go forward a few revolutions as well. And just change down a bit into the middle of the cassette just to help move things around. If you live in the desert of Arizona, then it might evaporate in 30 to 40 minutes. But if you live in damp England, then yeah, you might have to leave your bike overnight before you ride it the next day. But just wait for that, and then once that's done, you're good to go. Now this is my go-to method for maintaining a waxed chain for I'd say 99% of the riding that I do, day in, day out, this is what I will do. However, if, like as I mentioned, I'm targeting a particular race, something like the Tour de Station that I've been training for, or a time trial that I've been training for for months, and I really want to you know, do the best performance possible, then I will use a, a freshly immersive wax chain just for that extra gain. You know, why, why not give yourself every chance possible to achieve your goals and all that? One thing I would point out though is sometimes people, for whatever reason, someone else applies some lube to your bike or you, you know, you're in a pinch or something and you end up applying some wet oil-based lubricant to what has been previously a waxed chain. At this point, you don't want to be trying to maintain it anymore. It's been contaminated. At that point, you want to take the chain off, um, either strip it or degrease it and then you can always go back to doing a full immersive wax of, of that chain or just applying some drip on if you want, you know, 99% of the performance. Hope you found this useful. As ever, if you've got any questions, I mean, this video has come about because a lot of people have been asking us questions. Fire them down in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye. I should probably go clean the rest of my bike now. It's winter here. Sorry.